2019 was a good year for the EIB Group, not because of the investment we made per se, but because of the difference this investment will make to the prosperity and quality of life of people in Europe and across the world. This year was also a year of new beginnings. We enjoy the cooperation with a new European Commission and a new composition of Parliament and Council. We have a new pan-European commitment to fight climate change and we have a new partnership re-established between the Commission and the EIB Group to fight it together. We listened to the European Council and to the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, and last year the EIB Group announced a goal of generating 1 trillion euros of total investment for climate and environment between now and 2030. We now plan to dedicate 50% of our financing to climate action and environmental sustainability as of 2025. And we will do nothing that is not fully aligned with the Paris Agreement. The logic behind this being that, of course, it would not make very much sense to say we invest 50% of all we can do into climate projects and with the other 50%, we destroy the positive impact of our climate action. So we must make sure that climate is in everything we do. Among the good news I can announce today, one is that last year our financing for climate action was already at 31% of the bank's finance. You should know when we contributed considerably to the efforts of the multilateral development banks in the support of the Paris Agenda five years ago, and we were the driving force behind the MDBs at that time, we committed to 25% of climate lending by now. So we have reached 31% far above. The partnership with the European Commission has gotten off to an excellent start. We are proud of the fact that the EIB will be an engine to deliver the European Green Deal announced by the Commission. Last year, we also approved our new energy lending policy. This includes the commitment to end the consideration of conventional fossil fuels from the end of 2021. We are honoring the old contracts, the projects, but we are not going to new ones. We are the first IFI to do so, and this is an excellent example of European leadership on the climate front. This strategic autonomy that we can offer the EU, this leadership that we can show in the world is only possible because our shareholders are the EU member states and nobody else. Other IFIs are finding it difficult to follow suit because of the wide range of shareholders with divergent interests to, of those, to those of the European Union. Fighting climate change is the most defining challenge of our time. It is also the greatest investment opportunity of our time. Europe has been losing ground to our competitors on the innovation front for over two decades. And we will be successful with our climate policies only if we do it via innovation, research, technology, reaching new shores, not by going backwards. Climate offers us an opportunity to move in this direction. Climate offers us an opportunity to invest in Europe's competitiveness, to invest in new technologies, to invest in innovation that will secure not just our quality of life now, but competitiveness and quality of life for the next generations. Ten years ago, the World's largest public companies by market capitalization included a mining company, three oil and gas companies, three banks, and a bricks and mortar retailer. None of them are in the top 10 today. The only two that remain there are Microsoft and Apple. They have been joined by five other technology firms, Tencent, Alibaba, Amazon, Alphabet, and Facebook. So the change in the world's largest companies illustrates one side of the challenge. The greatest value to the economy, to our way of life, is brought today by technological innovation through companies, old and new, doing things differently. This is a blueprint how to tackle the next huge challenge, the transformation into an economy that creates wealth without creating additional CO2 emissions. Climate action does not mean neglecting other areas of work. That's why I'm sometimes a little bit skeptical when I hear the word climate bank because some people misunderstand it as climate bank only. No, of course, we are the climate bank because we develop and support innovation, SME activities, 
and by the way, cohesion activities in order to achieve the climate objectives. It certainly does not mean backsliding into closed mindsets. It does not mean doing less in these other areas like innovation, cohesion, or development finance. On the contrary, climate presents Europe with a business case and a pressing necessity to invest in these areas. We need to develop new green markets like we did with the first green bonds in 2007. We had been the pioneers in 2007 on green bonds, first issuance. People who did it, and I see some here, they were considered lunatics at that time. That market has grown to beyond $900 billion since, I think close to $1 trillion already now. And we will need innovative climate products across the EIB group. Launched by the EIF, the European Investment Fund, I say our subsidiary, but the truth is, in view of the sometimes a little bit uh, slow tanker of EIB, this is our speedboat. Uh, consider, for instance, the first ever sustainability venture capital fund with incentive mechanisms linked to the achievement of specific environmental impact goals. That's great. Achieving our climate goals also means making sure we pay attention to the regions that have thus far been most dependent on fossil fuels for their jobs and economic activity. Just transition fund or just transition activities does not only mean ensuring energy supply. It also means ensuring jobs and growth in these areas. A just transition to a greener future will need to include investments in retraining and attracting new jobs to these areas. So climate action will not shift attention away from our core mission of cohesion, which is embedded in the Treaty of Rome and is remaining there since. On the contrary, climate action requires action on cohesion. We can all work together for a more climate-friendly future only if no one is left behind. And equally, just as climate action requires cohesion, cohesion requires climate action only by investing sustainably can regions succeed economically in this day and age. Climate action also means job creation in 2019 to 20. For 2019 and 20, our investment report forecasts that green energy specifically will create around 500,000 jobs in Europe over the coming decades. In development finance, a lot of our investments have always been and will continue to be related to climate resilience and climate adaptation, making sure that infrastructure is resilient and we can adapt to more frequent adverse climate events caused by global warming. The causes of impact and impact of climate change are global, so we must step up our investments globally, and we are investing in innovative projects across the world, recognizing that the development of those countries should be done in a sustainable manner. Fighting climate change is key to Europe's competitiveness and relevance on the global stage. So we are thrilled to embrace the Commission's announcement of a new beginning, a new focus on climate and an offer of partnership, which we must continue in the future to strengthen to the delivery of the EU's policy objectives around the world.